I mean, when we're talking about Boys Don't Cry, I think what's problematic with Boys Don't Cry is that it's, it is a true story, and we need to understand these real stories. It's just, why is that the story that gets told over and over? Like, what is the fascination with seeing us die? What is the fascination with seeing us get raped and killed again and again? And I'm just really interested in that, in that intersection for a non-trans audience. Like, that's where, you, that's where we get our audience. That's the only way we can get an audience, is through pity and victimhood. And so that's, that's a real—that's what I have a lot of difficulty with that film. And I also have a lot of difficulty with the erasure of the black man who was also killed that night in the real story, um, Philip Devine. And so there's a—and all of the films, actually, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about with all of the films, and we try to be really nuanced in, in our approach to everything. Um, you point out that that man is not in the film. He's not the in film. the film. It was—because it's based on a, the true story of Brandon Tina. It's based on the true but story. But an African-American man was also murdered that night. Three people were murdered that night, and the film only dresses the two white people. And so that—that's—I think that's—yeah. Don't have the proper word to say <laughs> on air for that, but um, the film. Nancy expensive. Ford, do you have the proper word? <laughs> <laughs> this is the internet, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not. Well, <laughs> I mean, it is, but we're also on television. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it is. Again, I, I loved Boys Don't Cry. I loved it, but to realize that Philip Devine was erased from that story, that his death did not matter enough to the filmmakers to include it in that film is another act of violence, right? It is erasing him as if he didn't matter, but then it is also telling every black trans person, every black gay person, every black ally that your death does not matter, that your presence in this person's life and your being an ally to that person did not matter. And I think that one of the things that directors have to do is to be more conscious. Like, they have to, I think we have to live in the moment of our creation and understand what we're doing when we make choices like that. You can't just wipe someone out of history. He was there and he's not here now, just like Brandon Tina. And the more people begin to understand the impact of their decisions creatively, and the more people realize by watching Disclosure that the accumulation of 100 years of these types of choices have on a community, like have on pe actual human beings, hopefully, for me, that will move people to be smarter, more empathetic, and, and more deliberate about their decision making. Because erasing him is just, I mean, it's an act of violence, but it's also just lazy. Yeah. Well, you say in the film, in this very touching moment among an endless stream of deeply moving moments, if we can't see us, we can't be us. You know, the, the, the wonderful thing about Marion Wright Edelman is that she has such wisdom across, you know, um, across the, the range of human experience. When she said that about children, I don't think that she would exclude, you know, trans children or gender nonconforming children or children who feel like they are, are, are non-binary. She, she means all of us when she says that. And I think that to, to again, to have us be you know, homicide victims or, you know, to, 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 be, to be rape victims or to be exposed in a violent way and then discarded. Um, we don't need to see any more of that. We see that every day, you know? Jen Richards. What interests me that I just realized as we're talking that there's, there's um, a, a parallel between The Danish Girl and The Boys Don't Cry and that both are trans stories that are written and directed and performed by cis people for a cis audience. And in both cases, the complexity of the actual situation is erased in favor of something that's more easy to package. In the case of The Danish Girl, uh, Lily Elb was this incredibly uh, kind of daring progressive woman. And it was clear that her and her uh, wife were always in a lesbian relationship because her wife went on to do erotic lesbian painting for the rest of their life. They lived happily as a lesbian couple for many years, and it was only after six surgeries that Lily Elb eventually did, uh, did die, because she was always pushing the boundaries of, of medical science, and that they were operating in this, you know, pre-war, very um, artistic, kind of queer culture um, at the time. And so all that complexity is lost, and instead we have this story of this man who has to become a woman, and then his wife, you know, leaves him for this, you know, strapping uh, Austrian guy. <laughs> and so we, we, we erase all the actual queerness of it, and again, it reinforces this, this historical forgetting, as if queer people hadn't always been around.